Okay. Uh, so, first question I typically ask is, how familiar are you with my typing session videos? I've seen a couple. Okay. And how familiar are you with cognitive functions, typology in general? I've probably done it for about a year, but like, it's like on and off again. Okay. It's an interest. Okay. Um, let me start with uh, turning this down in my headphones a little bit because oh, I can turn it down here because it's a little loud in my headphones. I'm turn it right here. There. Okay. Um, so let's start with SI then, which is introverted sensing. Uh, first, let me ask you some questions about things that correlate with that. Um, hold on a second. Hey, hey. Problem solved. Quick tech will provide the muscle. Cool. Um, I've got another. Can you hold on a second? <laughs> I've got another problem. I've got an ashtray fire out here. I can smell it. Okay, uh, so SI stuff. First yep. of all, do you eat regularly or irregularly? Um, do you mean like breakfast, lunch, dinner kind of thing? Yeah. I usually have like a, something for breakfast and then either a lunch or a dinner. Do you... Do you find yourself frequently being extremely hungry before you eat? Yeah. So you don't... Do you, would you say... Why don't you cut that off at the pass? What do you mean by that? I mean... Why don't you say to yourself, Okay, you know what? Tomorrow I'm just going to eat at 4 p.m. Because today I waited too long. I got too hungry. Um, eat when I'm hungry, I guess. Okay. How about going pee? Do you hold your pee too long? If it's convenient for me, I can, like, I'll go. But, like, if I have to hold it, I can hold it. Okay. Um, let's say you are setting up to teach a class virtually. Uh, about sweaters and you have to prepare for you have to prepare both materials and uh, another activity or something for the people who are going to take your sweater class Walk me through okay. your walk me through your thought process there. What are you gonna? How are you gonna uh, accomplish this goal? Well, first I'd have to learn about sweaters, so I can actually teach something about it. Okay. And then I'd have to like determine some sort of activity for them to do. That like maybe test their knowledge about what I taught them. A sweater touching day. I guess. <laughs> Okay. Do you do any creative activities? Like either music, acting, dancing, writing, something like that? Um, nothing active right now. I used to like probably created like D&D &D worlds 
like maybe a decade ago, like okay. settings. Sure. Um, if you had to pick just one class to be a character of, which would it be? Wizard, oh. fighter, paladin, thief, what? I kind of like go between them, but I don't know, like maybe thief. Okay. What are the qualities of that class of character that appeal to you? Skills, like being able to do things, at least if you have to roll. Okay. Like in the set. So, what skills? If you were, if you imagine yourself currently transported back to an anime world where it's basically like an RPG and yep. you've got various skill trees that you can pursue one or the other. Which skill trees do you pursue? Assuming it's your standard middle ages monsters and, and treasure world. Is there magic? Yeah. Okay. Three classes. There's okay. A, just three classes. No, they're not random. <laughs> There's uh, you know, evil magic. There's good magic. That's we're not. There's non-evil magic, and then there's cleric magic. Yep, like healing. Yeah. I don't know. Like, um, I'd have to look at all the different classes available. You have to see what all the choices are, huh? Yeah. Okay. Let's say let's say the game is presenting it to you like this. It's going to give you two choices. You can choose one of the two choices, or you can say pass, and you receive uh, <clears throat> uh, a different a different second choice. But you won't be able to go back and get those first those choices you passed on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you choose one, and you can only choose one of the two choices in any regard. So your first choice is, uh, and we'll get a total of four choices. So okay. Your first choice is um, uh, dancing or uh, or comedy telling. Dancing. Okay. Um, second choice is uh, a a very fast uh, sword attack that does a lot of different slices in one attack time. Right. And the second one is a very slow long distance attack. It's very accurate and deadly, but it takes a long time to execute. It's like the world's slowest spell. Uh, first one. The sword okay. attack. All right. Um, third set of skill possibilities. You can call frogs to come help you if there are any around. Okay, summon a frog. Yeah, mm -hmm. summon frog, right, yeah. But more like um, you're the Aquaman of frogs. You okay. Go, circles come out of you and the frogs just I, the frogs? spilling all over the place. Um, or you can repel all... Um, you can repel... All plants that have have uh, sweet smelling flowers. Hmm. Go with plant repellent. Okay, probably a wise choice. Um, now let's imagine you're you're off on your first adventure, but your whole party's been killed except for you. you have four choices. Uh, there's supposed to be another choice, right? Okay, uh, I'm gonna give you another choice, but I wanted to give you a set situation first before I give you the other choice. Okay, you're off on your first adventure. Your whole party's been killed except for you, and now you're presented with the option to have your fourth choice, and one of it is instant fire. Now it's not enough fire to hurt anything, but you can always have cooking fire. Okay. Okay. Can you provide light. Uh, I mean. If you light the stick on fire, I guess. But it's like the it's enough it's like a it's like one of these comes out of your finger. Oh yeah, so like a cigarette lighter kinda. Of. Yeah. So it's enough to light things on fire, but not enough to be a big fire itself, right? Not a flamethrower. 
Yeah. Or you can have uh, the same ability, except it's freezing. So this will help you to, for example, preserve food or whatever. It's a little more powerful than the fire one, but maybe a little less useful. Yeah. I go with the freezing one. Okay. Now it's your first night on camping and you are ice cold because you didn't choose fire. What are you going to do? Well, where am I? You're in the middle of a, of a standard forest. Not spooky. Fairly not so big trees. Uh, fairly near some reasonably well traveled paths. Am I tired? Or? Your legs are tired. Your arms are extremely well rested. And your torso is basically sick of being the mediator between the two. Okay. Maybe look for a shelter. Okay. And if I can't find you, make a shelter. Okay. Now let's switch roles. You go. Okay. You do what I was what just do you doing. Mean? You do what I was just doing and I'll do what you were just doing. All right. So does it have to be a fantasy? Uh, no, you can start it. You can start it whatever you want, but you should have me pick between a certain set of options for to who to be, I guess. Yeah. All right. So we'll go with anime fantasy land. Okay. In the middle age. Okay. So your standard trope, sure. And so um, I get to pick first... a class or what? Did I get to pick a class? Yeah, you picked thief. Oh, okay. Yep. Thief. Uh, so, um, you pick a class. Standard class is available. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go cleric. Okay. And then now I give you four crazy choices for power. <laughs> Wait. Or you give me a situation. Whatever you want. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's go with choices. I'll give you three choices, then I'll give you a situation. Okay. Choice. All right. Um, your first choice is mind reading or levitation. I'll take mind reading for sure. Okay. Um, your second choice is... A fast heal, but it's for a small amount, mm -hmm. or a big heal for a big amount, but it takes longer. I'll take the small one. Okay. And your third choice. Um, an evil god or a good god? Because you're a cleric. I can't have a neutral god. <laughs> uh, I'll take the I, no. I'll take the I'll take the good god. Okay. I'll take the good god. It's easier to be a good guy than a bad guy. Maybe. Well, at least you know what the rules are if you're a good guy, I guess. Um. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. So. You... Go ahead. Situation. What's the scenario? Situation. Yeah. So, yeah, your party's all dead, and it's just you on your own. Okay, um, no problem. My, um, God's, my God is good and loving. I'm sure he'll protect me. Yep, you're in a canyon. Okay, that's where I like to hang that's out. Canyon kind of thing. And um, the nearest town was three days away. Mm. Um, you're out of spells at the moment. I'm out of spells, huh? Okay. Yeah, you just ran do I know which fight. do I know which direction the town's in? Yeah. Okay, then I'm going to bury any valuables I have or any other shit that I gotta carry. Yep. And tell them as lightweight as possible. And then I'm just gonna run it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna jog it out. But it's three days away. <laughs> that was three days I was thinking three miles three days away 
Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to establish a, a large pile of birch bark, light, okay. it, light it on fire, um, and, and pee on it. This is known to attract hippogriffs, which All right. are flying so creatures. Not <laughs> so I, I'll see if it attracts one, and then maybe if it lands, I'll hop on its back and it can fly me there. What if it wants to eat you? I'm a cleric, Okay. But you're out of spells. I, but the point is, I have a holy, a holy vibe. I'm a holy man. Believe. I'm a pious man, and yep. you know he's gonna respect that. I think the hippogriff. Maybe. I also am famously stern in my when I want to be, and I'm sure I can, I can make the hippogriff snap too like that if I need to. Oh yeah. Okay. So interesting. Which do you feel more comfortable? Which role do you feel more comfortable in? The uh, the world creation role or the world choosing role? Like the, the you mean like the player or the, yeah the player the world maker? Maybe the world maker. Okay. Um, let me ask you some TI questions. Okay. Uh, if all Icelandic cheese is made from the milk of whales, okay, and I have some whale cheese here, is it necessarily from Iceland? No. Okay. If if Susie is either a husky or a basset hound. And uh, and Saucy is either a Basset Hound or a Corgi, then hold on, I've lost my train of thought. You had two if statements there. Eh? Oh, no, no, or statements. Yeah, two horror statements. I couldn't remember the name of the first one, though. Susie? But the first dog. Husky, right. If Susie's oh, either a husky or a basket husky. hound... <laughs> that's what I couldn't remember. If Susie is e either a husky or a basset hound, and Sassy is either a corgi or a basset hound, and um, there are not two basset hounds... What can we conclude? Not two basset hounds. Um, you could either conclude that... What was the first one's name? Susie and Saucy. Okay, Susie would be a husky and Saucy would be a corgi. Or you could conclude that Susie was a basset hound and Saucy was a corgi. Or... Or neither. But you know, the only thing you could conclude, conclude was... Both of them would not be basset hounds. Right. Okay. That's true and so sad because we were kind of hoping they'd both be basset hounds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your TI is certainly front stack. Um, let's see about a genealogy, how it links with SI, which so far seems pretty front stack as well. Uh, who is my mother's only brother's only son's? Only cousin in relation to me. Me, yeah. Who is my mother's mother's husband's only son-in-law's only daughter in relation to me? Not really related, are they? Let's... Oh wait, did I say mothers? My bad. You said no. I think I said it wrong. I think I said it wrong. What I meant okay. to say was my father's 
mother's husband's only daughter-in-law's only daughter in relation to me? Mother's father's... Can you repeat that one? My mother's father's... My mother's father's only daughter-in-law's only daughter. <laughs> yeah, I said it wrong. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're right. That's all on me. That's all on me. Let's just, just, just pretend the last three minutes didn't happen. Uh, right. uh, okay, so let me ask you some some more, I guess, skills based in any questions. Can you, I, I'm going to come up with a, a new invention, and I want you to tell me names that I could name it that would make it marketable for the marketing team. So the first right. invention I have is an artificial Christmas tree that if you turn it inside out, it becomes a artificial Easter bunny. Can you help me come up with a snappy name for it to help sell this new product? It's an artificial Christmas tree that turns into an artificial bunny. It's an artificial Christmas tree, but when you go to put it away, instead of when you instead of folding it like you normally would or whatever, you turn it all the way inside out, and it becomes a Christmas tree shaped Easter bunny, basically. It's right. upside down though. Well, when you just flip it, it'll be right side out. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. So yeah, the, but the fat part's still on the bottom. Yeah, okay. Okay. So names for that. Yeah, names for this great new invention. Your Christmas bunny. Okay, other names? Um, uh, the Tree Bunny 10,000. Okay, it's, it's a good name. How about, um, what else? Incredible. Your convertible bunny tree. Okay. Um, like, what does it actually do? Well, I mean, <laughs> what does a Christmas tree do? I guess, um, your, um, bunny tree. It, it fills people's hearts with gladness. That's what it does. Uh, okay. Let me talk about your Fs. Which would you rather drown? A puppy or a kitten? Why do I have to drown? Back because to it's got COVID. But both of them or they both They both are just covered in COVID. The only okay. the only way well, to safely you have to well but... the boat covered in cover. <laughs> no. What the you're not allowed to drown both of them. Somebody else wants to drown one of them. <laughs> oh, so I have to pick like first. You get first pick. I get first pick. Then it doesn't really matter, does it? If, if well, someone else Well which one do you want to drown? <laughs> I'm pretty cat. Okay, why? Is it because you like dogs better? Why? Yeah. Because I like dogs. Because you like dogs better. Okay. Um. All right. Let me see. Let's... Yeah, there's a bit of connection. Are we having connectivity problems? Let me breathe. Just then. Okay. Let me try refreshing real quick. Are you there? Yep, I can hear you. You're just not moving. Okay, cool. Um, I'll put my camera on. 
video settings. Generally has a oh, video. Uh, I guess it doesn't have a low res version anymore. Used to, I think it used to. It's anyway, right now. all right, cool. So, um, how? Let's say you walk into a room and somebody's just had an argument, they're, or they're just finishing up an argument. You can see that. One of the people, it's it's Judy again. Judy's always getting into trouble. It's Judy and Scott. Judy and okay. Scott are, uh, are a couple. They've been together. You know them both. And Judy's crying and wiping her eyes. Hi, Mark. Just, just don't. You know. Okay, so how much information do you think you're going to walk away from that encounter either retaining, thinking about, having noticed, or something like that? A bit. Okay. Do you do you have people in your life? Do you know a couple that you see t hang out with occasionally? Is there somebody, some other people in your life that comprise a uh, dating couple that you hang out with occasionally? I don't really hang out with many people, but like when I do, sure. Okay. Um, do you feel like you understand the the dynamics between them? from an observational perspective, well, or do you feel like you find their dynamics confusing or do you feel like their dynamics aren't worth your attention? Like I can understand them, I guess. Okay. What's more important as a, uh, as an absolute value? Is it, doing things efficiently or is it doing things exactly right? Exactly right. What's more important as an absolute value? Um, being, being kind or being honest? Like, hmm. kind or honest? Like, absolutely. So if I pick one, what happens to the other one? Well, the other one becomes instrumental. In other words, you're honest only when it helps you to be, or you're you're. You're honest, but it's purposeful. It's a it's a it's a necessary prerequisite to the goal of kindness. Uh, in other words, you can't be both dishonest and kind concurrently, and you have to be kind. So, therefore, the the honesty would be instrumental to the kindness. Or if the kindness mm -hmm. is instrumental to the honesty, then you say, "Well, I'm I'm kind in order to be honest successfully without." incurring consequences basically so uh like i want to be honest but um i have to use my kindness to make sure that i'm not honest in ways that hurt people's feelings too much all right i'd be kind okay what does the following three things bring to mind uh, large brimmed hats, waterway, and um, the equator. Large brim hats, waterway, equator. Some sort of like Asian worker in a waterway. Like that's in a humid climate. Okay. Wearing a hat, big wide brimmed hat. Okay. What does the following bring to mind for you? Um, a donkey, 
a, um, a pan and overalls. A donkey, a pan, and overalls. Um, I don't know the stereotype of the South, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, how does uh, how many synonyms can you think of for the word uh, immature? Synonyms being the same thing, but said a different way. Yeah. Childish. Not immature. Um, not mature. But that's not a word. That's not. Childish, not mature. Um, hmm. Naive. Okay. Um, if you had to, there's a poetry contest and it requires you to, or requires the competitors to, uh, write five poems in 20 minutes. And the person who's written the best overall package of five poems in 20 minutes is the winner of the contest. Would you rather be a competitor in the contest or a judge? And which do you think you'd be better at? I'd rather be a judge. Because five poems in 20 minutes is quite a few poems. Okay. Do you think you'd be good at being a judge? I think I'd be a good judge, yeah. Okay. So, in, uh, in debate, in, in judging debate, there's this thing called judge variance, which says, basically, after, after a bunch of different judges have judged all the debaters, you can see which judges are closest to the mean i guess bias and which ones have the most squirrely squirrely from the norm results yep so um do you think you'd be towards the mean i don't know i've never judged a competition so i don't know like how judges would judge okay well Do the other judges or well, i don't know if you were if you were tasked, let's say a record company hired you and said, "Listen, we're an antiquated business. We're a record company, and we would like you to identify which of all of these songs that we've produced is going to be most likely to be a hit." Do you think you'd be good at doing that job? So I, I'd have to determine which of the songs are going to be a hit. Yeah, so this record company's got, let's say, 20 hours total of recorded songs from various artists. And mm -hmm. your job is to listen through all 20 hours of it. And that's going to be they're like three-minute long songs. Um, so it's, you know, it's like 400 songs or something. Uh, you are going to be asked to pick out your top five, your number one, most likely to be a hit. Number two, most likely to be a hit, you know, and then there's okay. a, a separate, a second job, which is you're going to rank the ones of these 400 that have the most complicated musicianship or most skilled musicianship, or is the hardest to do most accomplished from a technical level. Okay. Uh, and mm -hmm. I have to give you top five of those as well. What do you think? Wait, first of all, are you going to have equal difficulty, more difficulty with one of those tasks than the other? Um, probably more difficulty in finding what is going to be the hit overall. I think I could nut out which one is more complex. Or what about a personal no. favorite? If you, personal were, favorite. if you were asked to say which is your personal favorite. Personal favorites. So you think that would be easier than which one's going to be a hit? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
What do you feel as though you're still trying to understand in general about life, the universe, and everything? Like how it works, why we're here, those kind of questions. Yeah. And do you have do you have any current thoughts as to what the answers might be to these questions? Um, there's a couple, but it really depends on like different things, I guess. Okay. Is there any particular kind of large questions of that sort that cause you difficulties in your life? Like, for example, uh, I can't stop thinking about about whether or not evolution adequately explains the origin of the species or something. I think evolution doesn't know. Like, um, yeah, I have a couple questions about like the future. Okay. Do you have plans? Do you have plans for your future? No, I'm very bad at planning the future. Honestly. Okay. Um, do you have a vision of what, like, do you have a, an understanding of how life, how you might be happier in a different world or less happy in a different world? What do you mean by different world? Like, right now we're wherever we are in our life. Uh, so, um, I was married to my second wife for quite a while. We got divorced when my daughter was like 17. Um, and then, you know, after that, it was a very different world for me in the sense that everything prior had been under the frame of family stuff, wife, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then everything after was a very different world. And uh, But what I'm saying is, do you, do you conceive of things changing dramatically that causes you to feel differently about life, uh, potentially? Yeah, potentially. Okay. And that doesn't link to goals at all? It would. Somewhat. Okay. But you don't particularly have a lot of goals. I don't have many goals. Yeah, I have like maybe, like I want to have a family eventually. But... I see. Um, okay. Well, I feel like uh, I think you're an ISFP. Okay. Um. Can you tell me what you thought you were coming in? Um, INTP. Okay. Uh, I thought you thought you were probably an INFJ, and for a little while I thought you might be an INFJ yeah. as well. But I think you're an ISFP. Okay. Whether uh, intuition is not great. Um. I feel as though I'm unsure how much of your current, I guess you'd say, ideational momentum is due to uh, being careful versus how much of it is representative of how you are in terms of the amount of words that come out of you. Okay. Because ISFPs and ISTPs both uh, when I talk to them, they tend to have fairly short answers and not go on and on, right? So, what's your what's your definition or understanding of intuition? Extroverted or introverted? Introverted, introverted intuition. Introverted, um, trying to move the idea down to one thing. Right. That's a good definition. Uh, what's your definition of um, extrovert? And did you want to read into intuition? Yeah, extrovert. That'd be like generating. 
like making more ideas. So it'd be a quantity versus quality kind of argument almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you feel, what subject matter do you feel you have the most to say about or most desire to express yourself about? Well, professionally, I teach math, but um, I don't know. What's your favorite math like, what function? What am I? Sorry? What's your favorite math function? My favorite math function? Is it division? Well, oh, do you mean like the four operations? <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Are those just called operations? Those aren't functions. What? Yeah, like adding, subtracting, multiply, divide. Yeah. Yeah, they be operations. Oh, they're operations. Okay. Good to know. I'll file that away. Uh, okay. Um, so, if you were to express yourself and you say, "Listen, I've got to let the world get a sense of who Mark is. I got to give them a piece of Mark." Mm -hmm. how, are you, how are you going to express yourself? Painting? Write a song? Write a poem? Make a video? What? I'm very express myself in that kind of way. But if I had to, um, it would be... Hmm. I don't know. I'm not a great painter. Um, I'm not that great at poetry. Um, what are the other choices? Uh, could be writing a song. Could be making a video. Could be uh, a performance art of some kind, like <laughs> you standing on some aluminum foil for a while. <laughs> I guess. You'd be making a video because then I could edit it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, okay, so uh, what if you had one piece of advice? To, they said, "Okay, listen, Mark. Here's the microphone, and we're gonna turn it on a little while. This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna give one piece of advice. It's gonna be instantly translated into every language in the world and broadcast on every station and everything and everywhere in the world." And so you got to make sure it's universal. It should apply to everybody. And everyone's going to have a chance to hear what you think they should do. What's your one piece of advice to give the world? I don't know. Advice to give the world. If it, I don't know. Like I could give general, like live your life kind of nonsense I guess. <laughs> but, like be happy but like anyone knows those kind of things like how how does one go about being happy i don't know um fulfill themselves or do things they like to do those are the usual ways people think they are happy or feel happy and what about you? Do you feel the need to make yourself feel happy or is it just naturally there? I don't know. How do you um, feel right now? Right now? Um, interested in finding out what you know about me. Okay. Finding this time, working it out. Um, really a feeling. How do you think I'm feeling? I don't know. <laughs> um, you don't look annoyed or anything. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not annoyed or anything. Uh, okay, so the thing is, uh, I I don't feel particularly confused. I I feel pretty confident that you're an ISFP. Uh, I think that. There's a. I mean, describe your own relationship with language. My relationship with language, like it's definitional. 
find things and then that's how I use it to communicate with others. Okay. Um, so the thing is, what do, I think you're an ISFP and basically what that means is your extroverted intuition polar, your FI DOM, your SE tool, and uh, your NI... Uh, your, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more what this means in just one second. But and then and I um, absolute value. So, but if you have any questions before I go any further, uh, you go ahead and ask your question. All right. So, what's my like top stack then? Okay. So your dominant function would be introverted feeling. Introverted feeling is. It's uh, it's my blind spot, so. Really, I don't understand introverted feeling at all. I don't think. Introverted feeling is. Isn't it like preferences? It's significance, which is a little bit different. Uh, certain things are significant to a person, and certain things are less significant. It's appropriate for a parent, for example, to find their own child more significant than someone else's child. So, uh, for example, yeah. for example, if uh, there's an emergency someplace, you're going to go make sure your kid, you got your kid safe first. And then if you can, you'll help save some of the other kids, not the other way around. That's FI. It tells you what's important to you. Versus what's important in general. Mm -hmm. um, FI is also the capacity to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. So it's uh, knowing how somebody else is I'm going that. to... I'm sorry, say again? I don't think I'm that great at that. Putting okay. yourself in someone else's shoes. Okay. And... Uh, I find it's a hard one for me to describe because it's my poor. But the I, ISFPs in general are have the following qualities. They tend to not have a lot to say. They tend to uh, have an uncertain seeking about them. And... Uh, F it's a, it's a tough type to it's a tough type to defend against INFJ, not against INTP. I don't think you're an INTP. I know okay. you're, I know you're not an INTP because you just don't have that much extroverted intuition. But your TI is good. Extroverted intuition. Extroverted intuition. Yeah, could we test that a bit more? Or? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, can you tell me how many how many different punchlines can you think of for the following joke? Uh, uh, I just flew in from Detroit. Okay. Yep. So it smelt funny. Um, the food was terrible. Um. Oh, punchline has to have whatever. Not oh, funny. Um, they looked funny. The food was terrible. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Um, how many different meanings of the word? Well, let me try a different way. Okay. Um, so, let's try, first of all, a back and forth rhyming poem thing. It goes like this. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, uh, let me start again. Um, uh, another day, I... Went to see uh, Georgina. 
And and on that day, I went to see Georgina. That's the first line of the poem. Now, you make the second line of the poem that rhymes, and then um, I'll make the third line that rhymes. We'll see how long we can go keeping this rhyme. Do they have to be, like, rhyming the entire line and structurally? And no, just the end of it. Just the end of it. So what was the first line? Another, uh, and on that day, I went to see Georgina. I really think that she was... I need something that rhymes with Georgina. Well, let me give you an easy... Let's start with an easier first line, okay? Uh, um, uh, I love this horsey who has fur so sleek. I love this horsey that has fur so sleek. I think that it is very, very meek. I'd like to rent and ride it for a week. Perhaps then I'd know what to seek. Okay. Um... What else can I do? For How many uses can you think of for a... A uh, tennis racket. Tennis racket? A weapon? Something to play tennis with? Something to balance things on? Uh, like, you could use it as an improvisational table? You could, um... Hmm, um... What's your definition, um, what's your definition what? of extroverted feeling? Extroverted feeling? Um... My definition of that would be, um... Like... It'd be how um, other people perceive you. Okay. Do you feel as though you understand how other per others perceive you? Not strong. Do you feel as though Maybe you... I have a stereotype that they think they perceive me as. Do you think that you can... You could manage their perceptions if you want to. Manage them towards not being negative, sure. Okay. So, is... Which of these would you think is a more true statement about extroverted feeling? Um that the best way to get people to like you is to listen and ask questions or the best way to people get people to like you is to engage with them about mutually shared interests or mutual mutual interests to like me and i'd have to do that those two tasks Well, I feel like the second one would be more towards the goal, but I think I prefer just listening. Okay. Um, what kind of media do you watch? Um, YouTube, Netflix, that kind of stuff, anime. Cool. What anime have you watched? Have I watched? Like Ghost in the Shell, Cowboy Bebop. Uh huh. Anything more contemporary? More contemporary. I haven't watched anime in like the last two years. Probably like Sword Art Online, that kind of thing. What do you think about Sword Art Online? Um, it's an interesting idea. Mm hmm. Like being transported into another world. But like, it gets tropey. It's very tropey. Uh, okay. Did you um, did you make it through the whole main the the actual sort of online arc? Yeah, the first one, season one, season two. Yeah, okay. Until they get out. Uh, okay, interesting. So it's I I I think you were right to have me test your any more. 
Um, polar. That's the thing. It doesn't seem polar to me, no, either. Uh, Any is annoying because I don't feel as though I have a clear, bright line as to what comprises polar in the way that I do for TI. I just typed somebody who had a really clear instance of TI polar, but um, this is not... I suspect you're an INFJ, which I think you are. Okay. Because I think the objection here is not just that you're not any polar, but... What would I, that polar be? It's TE polar. TE polar means... And I didn't really ask any TE questions. TE polar yeah. is... Uh, okay, well, you've been tasked with making a birdhouse. Okay. How do you go about doing so? Well, I'd have to know what the specifications of the birdhouse would be, and then you, the materials you use. Let me change the question. What? You've been suddenly taken up. A, a what's happened is a a nymph from the forest who's invisible you can't see has come okay. up and kissed the back of your neck, and in doing so, she has embedded in you a, an insatiable yeah. insatiable need to build a birdhouse. Just a great desire to have to build one. Okay. And, and it's entirely up to you as to what the design is or anything, but you won't be able to get rid of this need until you complete building the birdhouse. Well, I'd have to plan out the birdhouse and then what materials I'd have to use then get those materials and actually any tools that I also need and then I'd build it. Okay. Can, the- can you break... Um, Doing the laundry down into exactly six steps. Into six steps. Okay. Um, it'd be you just have to be logical to get to six, don't they? So first, I get the laundry that I need to wash. I put it in a machine. I put in like the laundry powder, whatever it is. Turn the machine on and wait till it's finished. Take out the laundry and then dry it. Okay. And then collect it after it's dried. That's an extra step. You have to leave it there now. Oh, oh well. (laughs) Um, Okay. Uh, If... If something breaks, are you likely to try to fix it yourself? Depends how complex it would be. Like if it's electronics, probably not. If it's something that can be put together with duct tape, sure. Okay. Um, What do you think about the idea of there are two people who enter into a relationship explicitly because the man says, well, look, I want uh, a woman to be a good mother to my young child. And the woman says, I want a man who takes care of me. And they both feel uh, as though the relationship is meeting their practical needs so it's good enough. What do you think what what do you think about that couple? Do you have any opinion about them? I think it'll work. But will it be fulfilling to them? I don't know. Like if they're both happy with each other and the ways they fulfill each other. Yeah. Um could somebody leverage or, or forget somebody leveraging, but how how significant would utility be in your own relationship decision making? So let's say you met somebody who would be who had a lot of money and had a lot of other concrete benefits, but you just didn't really like them very much. But there weren't nothing really especially wrong with them. Would you think uh, uh, this is a good relationship? I'm happy because I I get net benefits, or would you think no because I don't like them enough? Maybe the second one, no. Okay. 
I have to like the person, I'd guess. Like the utility is one argument, but Okay. Yeah. Um, How important are looks to you? Not very. Like to a level, like Okay. Like within a range. So what are the, the, some of the qualities of INTP that you identified with in what you read about INTPs? Um, TI. I thought I had like weak any or okay any. This is the second function. It's not very developed. Um, I think my SI is pretty good. Yeah, your SI is pretty good. The, um, my FE's. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think... <sighs> then, like, the shadow functions, or well, the second, the back end. I think it's fair to say your any is not polar. It's... It could easily enough be fifth. How much do you value novelty or originality in the sense that you watch? How much of a absolute value is that for you? That something be original that you watch it. If it's too unoriginal, do you dislike that a lot? Yeah. Okay. It has to have some originality, or okay. If it's tropey, if I like, depends how much. Okay. Um, so why would, you, if I were to tell you, if I were to ask you to explain to me why you think you're not FI, what would you say? If I'm not FI. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what you believe, but if you were just tasked with the argument, I'm, gonna, I'm tasked to argue, I'm not FI, what aspects of yourself would you use in making those arguments? Well, I'd have to argue, like, I'd have, there'd be either I don't attribute to the FI, or I'm more TI. Okay. Your preference for that one. Um... What aspects of F, what would you expect to see in an FI user that you don't see in yourself? They wouldn't like use logic for the decisions, I guess. But FI is not about logic, is it? Uh, well, it's a deliberation function in the same sense the TI is. It just, it deliberates on things that take a longer amount of time to the process really which is complicated stuff that because because emotions are things that don't they aren't subject to the law of non-contradiction in other words i can be both happy and sad at the same time um, can you i thought you can only be happy or sad no you can be happy and sad happy about certain aspects of things sad about other aspects of things yeah, this mix okay. of mishmash of emotions. But the yeah. fact that you said that suggests more like uh, FI backslot, you know. But, um. Yeah, I don't understand FI, I think. Okay. Uh, would you call yourself nostalgic? Yes. Okay. And do you embed that nostalgia into objects of some sort, like physical objects? Like you have. The souvenir from that time you went to Niagara Falls. I would have definitely some objects that I have nostalgia for, but do I embed like ideas towards them? No, but, no I just mean, do you keep things around and then periodically go, ah, this thing that reminds me of when I went to Meow. Not really. Okay. Um, do you know where everything is? You know where all your stuff is? Right now? I think I have an idea of where most of my stuff would be. Okay. 
but it, like the other day, I couldn't find my headphone charging case. And that annoyed me until I looked for it and then eventually found it. Okay. Um, T-E. T-E. So, uh, let's say somebody gives you a, a set of instructions to go first do step one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, yeah. six that step of instructions. How often do you find yourself going out of order and then going, ah, shit, I need to do step one first. Now I got to start over. Or are you just going to go straight down the one, two, three, four, five, six? I find that I might look at the steps and then see if I can find a better way. Okay. And does your better way actually turn out to be a better way? Oh, it probably wastes me more time. Right. Okay. Um, if I've got a problem where I can't figure out why this app on my computer isn't letting me do meow to this file because meow, are you a good person to ask? I could solve it. And how would you go about solving it? I'd look it up for you. And then I'd, because I think I could probably do it better than you solving it. Okay. Interesting. Um, what else could you possibly be? I mean, I guess you could be an INTJ. That's a possibility as well. Look, um, when I do those typology tests, like, I usually get INTP. I know you don't care about the typology test, but initially I got INTJ, I think. It, the thing is, um, it's not that I don't care about them. I just, I don't trust, them I just trust the fact that because uh, it's my, self-reporting. My direct testing of your extroverted intuition is a more reliable indicator. Yeah. Um, so INTJ is possible. INTJ is something I didn't come up into until just now, but there's does seem to be um I I don't I don't get a lot of FE from you, you know? Mm-hmm. I do find it easy enough to talk with you, which is typical for well, talking with an I person, but I find you generally less talkative than an INFJ. I find how you... Would you hmm? How would you test that? Well, it really depends on the expansiveness of people's answers. So when I'm talking with other ex- extroverts, often I have to say, okay, 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 that's enough. Let me get the next question, right? I'm definitely introverted. No, I, yeah, you're definitely introverted. <laughs> Um, but different extroverts have different styles of answering as well. Like, for mm-hmm. example, uh, if I typed an ESTP like I did earlier, he gives fairly well, fairly lengthy answers, but they're singular answers and then they end. Whereas yeah. if I ask an NE DOM, they give a singular answer and they'll have to really rein themselves in to stop answering. To not give. On the other hand, it could be blah, 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 you know? Uh, and it, once they relax a little bit, it's pretty easy to see the difference in the extroverted intuition. Now, obviously, introverts, it takes a little longer to drag out the extroverted yep. intuition. But uh, even then, um, what I'm dragging out it looks more like fifth slot dragged out extroverted intuition than it does like second slot. And there's a pretty big difference between those two. Second slot would be NI then. Uh, if you're, no, fifth slot, fifth slot extroverted intuition means NI oh, don't. Oh, no. NI don't. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm going to say you're either an INTJ or an INFJ. You sound like your TE is too good for INFJ. And, uh, it sounds like you consider FE to be a, a matter that you have to attend to periodically, but don't really like to. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you identify with the sentence, everyone's doing everything wrong, and though it outrages me, I reveal nothing? 
No? I think everyone's doing their own thing. Okay. Everyone's doing their own thing. And if they go on their own. So what's the biggest mistake people who are doing their own thing can make? Not realizing that they're making a mistake, I guess. Or like keeping to repeat over and over the same mistakes of the past. Is it trying to be somebody else? Or is it... Uh, is it... Reje reje rejecting society. Say again? If they want to fit into society. If they want to fit into society and they try to be someone else and they're not, like, maybe. Okay, so, I mean, what do you think's the more likely path to a wrong self, so to speak, a wrongly directed self? Is it because they were too... too ready to reject and or too unwilling to compromise to work with existing realities or is it because they were too likely to compromise too much and give up their authentic reality sorry what was the first one the first one is they are um too too unwilling to compromise and they're too staunch in their individualism or okay, yeah. the second one is too willing to compromise and they sacrifice too much of what's authentic to them. That'd be hard. So which one makes them... Like, what do you think people... What do you think the bigger risk is? The bigger risk. So the first one was... I have to think about that. It's either too much conformity or too much non-conformity, basically. Which one's more risky? Yeah. Which one's more risky? Non Say again? I think the non-conformity would be more risky because they don't fit in and um, other people would identify that as something that He's not like them, so they'd be an us versus them kind of thing. Okay. And there are people who are too conformist. Um, I, I am going to go with uh, INFJ. I think you're an INFJ. Okay. Right. So uh, I'm going to stop the recording now. I'll share it with you privately. Yep.